sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. I just choked down chocolate chip cookies and grandpa's femur. Fem- fem- femur. Did we make money, mon- mon- money now? <laughs> no, we had to pay So down. this episode, it's just like, too slippery. I, I'm slicing everything. <laughs> Every time I swing my five iron, it goes up that guy's ass. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the Sad Dads Club Podcast. Here's your host, Jim and Boo. I like going into a show like hot and excited. Yeah. Is that how you're feeling I'm right like now? I'm like revved up and ready to go. All right. Well, I'm all hot and bothered. We got pretty much an hour to go. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to Sad Dads Club Podcast, uh, episode 72. 72. I'm uh, the Foo. I'm Jim. And uh, we are prepared for a show ready to go we're ready to it's like a you know like when they put horses in the gate at the at the horse race and they're all like like hopped up on hopped coke up. and speed <laughs> pretty much that's you right now yeah right now i'm yeah. ready to go uh-huh you've got like we your, like just started rattling off like stuff and we're like fuck we gotta put pause on it because we got we gotta show <laughs> stop talking yeah this is how it goes we have to record this yeah. so yeah I, I i don't feel like we need to we just jump into shit yeah, we just, where do you want to start let's just jump in it uh thank yous Thank uh, you. And you probably, because we were talking about data mm-hmm. earlier, metrics and whatnot. Oh, so, da- not datas. Not datas, but metrics for the show and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. we, f- you pulled data for January and yeah. one year, so we essentially doubled our audience. Now, to put that in perspective, we're just small guys. We're just two guys in a garage. Two, two dads talking in a garage uh, about everyday stuff. Yep. But we doubled our download metrics. Yeah. Uh, over one year. I'm happy about that. I am I'm happy. Or I'm yeah. really happy about that. Yeah. To I'm, be totally honest, I think that's awesome. I'm now, not you know, we're doing it for you and me and just to keep up the chat and there's a small crew apparently of people that enjoy listening to us, but to double our audience after a year uh, I'm filled with gratitude and appreciation for the listeners. Yeah. Uh, thanks for giving us a try. Yeah, uh, thank you. And it uh, means a lot because you know, yeah, pe- people are listening. And if you're new to our show, I mean, it that it's a conversational show yeah. with some some uh, g- giggles and a lot of giggles, hopefully, but sometimes serious stuff and just shit that's going down, stuff that we yeah. deal with all I, the time. How do you describe it to one of my in laws? It. Um, if you've ever, like, it's just campfire talk. Like, you're sitting around a campfire with a bunch of fr- your family, yeah. and shit just starts to get off the rails sometimes, but sometimes it's really deep and introspective. Mm-hmm. That's this. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. We're just campfire dudes. We're, we're campfire girls. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Would you like to buy some cookies? But don't judge us on our outfits. We're not a Super Bowl halftime show. No. That whole and thing. my sash doesn't fit anymore. Did you see? I did you see the it. halftime? Yes, I did. Were you offended? Oh my God, so much offense. Was your soul going to be damned for watching I was J-Lo like, and Shakira shake their hips at you? I just felt bad for all the little girls of, of the United States and maybe around the world that were watching the Super Bowl that had to be subjected to all of that mirrored body work and whatever else. I, it wasn't... That whole thing. I, I, let me put it to you in some some perspective. Yeah. Because... As a sad dad, I spent many, 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 many hours of my time in a prison at <laughs> with a prison wallet. Yeah, hey, uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. <clears throat> just counting, just marking down the days on my cell wall. No, um, yeah, I spent many days, many hours at dance competitions. Mm-hmm. That was just dance competitions on steroids is what that i mean you know this is professional entertainment this is what it is right it's not like you went to uh what do they call those shows the the baptism no like the shows they have where (laughs) they're like the girls are dancing all like the rocket oh uh, you know what do they call club no well (laughs) no i can't i can't cabaret cabaret it's not like a cabaret show where like bras are getting flung off and you know i mean we had uh janet jackson show nipple right i mean that that's that was nothing even close to that to see we and we don't have to dwell on this long but (laughs) i you know i saw I didn't watch the game. We we, okay. we were watching Star Wars, uh, Clone Wars, with the kids. So it was like, uh, you know, I've missed the 
boat on giving two shits. And now that you, yeah. and uh, we had this topic too when we were eating a random snack tray in the kitchen without watching or observing the game. Uh, <laughs> looking for sponsors at Chick fil A. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we were talking about how uh, akin the um, commercials are mm-hmm. to the things that we've talked about in the past about Black Friday and Amazon sales and Christmas sales and all these things. It's like uh, now that the internet is here, I don't even have to watch the game anymore Well, that to, actually, to care about the commercials. I can, is, I can go to YouTube and get all the commercials pulled down and get them all there. We're, we're going down this path. You know what? I enjoy the surprise of the commercials during the Super Bowl. No. I mean, we watched the Super Bowl. It was a big one at my in-laws' house because the Niners were in it. Right. And the Chiefs were in it. And so Shanna's dad is from the Midwest, grew up a Chiefs fan. So he's by. And then he exactly. And then he moved out here, became a Niner fan. And right. so he was like, I said, Who are you gonna root for? You know, and he's like, It doesn't matter. Just hoping for a good game. Yeah. Yeah. Although Oddly, he was much disappointed when the Niners lost. Really? So he was pretty vested in that, apparently. and He had some sub-feelings. But so, anyway. But I get upset when I f- ha- get like, tidb- oh, the, here's the Super Bowl commercial that's coming up on Sunday. It's like, no, I don't I oh, want to yeah. watch. I, I want to be surprised by it. I don't want to watch it before you watch it. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine if the... Apple 1984 commercial came out on the internet before. Oh, I mean, yeah. that would have been like. Well, yeah. I mean, that, and that's just the thing, though. That's where we are now. Now it's like, I but, know. You know if you don't want to have, if you're you just, doing it's like spoil, like like yeah. game spoilers. Like you just have to stay away from the internet yeah. before. Yeah. So we, I, mean, I, I didn't watch the game, and we weren't. We we got like a YouTube summary on all the, like the really cool commercials, like the Doritos commercials with uh, uh, Nas. Yeah. Nas X, Lil yeah. Nas X, and uh, Sam Sam Neil. No, whatever the cowboy guy that's in uh, <laughs> I the ranch. Anyway, I don't remember. Anyway, Doritos oh, commercial. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, Sam, and Sam, his, his mustache yeah. does the wave, and little they're Sam, like, yeah. and then Billy Ray Cyrus is at the end. Well, I ain't going dance. Well, my favorite one was the uh, Groundhog Day one with. Uh, I like that one. That one was really because well I done. enjoyed. Bill Murray Bill and Murray. the Groundhog Day. The yeah. Gladiator, you still ain't got me sold on it, but <laughs> I enjoyed the the theme. I thought it was really funny. I yeah. thought it was well done. Yeah, uh, It was interesting that they were able to get most of the actors back from the movie. Oh, yeah. To do, yeah, to do, <laughs> ah, that was really funny. Anyway, yeah. so we didn't see the Super Bowl, but then somewhere when it, you know, I would check the score just to see because I'm sure my sister was also vested in the Niners to see whether or not they were going to win. So I was checking in on the scores, and I saw after halftime, I saw plenty of tweets like, "Just saw halftime show. I think I'm a lesbian thanks to Shakira, dude. You know, yeah, that girl. I mean, I'm a She's she's both got of those tips. two, her and J Lo for crying out loud. Yeah, they knocked it out. Like I don't know. Anyway, how you complain about so either was, one of those two. I I already knew that you know they did halftime well, mm-hmm. halftime well. It was a very well done yeah. halftime. To then sure. see the outrage, <laughs> like hours and a day plus later, about the outfits and the the sets. And the you hear it the, right. The I'm, dance ups, I'm getting yes. irritated, and <laughs> I just I, I'm like, how is this you know, really? Hold up, really? we can go to the Ukraine and ask them to investigate right. someone We're for ups- a vote f- to to like help somebody in a vote, <laughs> but we can't have professional entertainers singer, and singers, singers and yeah. dancers perform at halftime yeah. without. Yeah, controversy. The lar- and the biggest thing for me, and and we can kill it here, was that <laughs> that's we, probably a good idea. Every si- every game on the sideline, there are uh like the body type premier top of the top of the visually um, appealing cheerleaders in some of the most scantily clad apparel you will ever see in oh, any yeah. sporting event next to ring girls yeah. in MMA or boxing yeah. shaking their thing uh-huh. uh, 
And no one seems to have any protest but about that. two women who are professional entertainers. Yes. Going, having a good time. Yeah. Putting on a good show. Uh-huh. Uh, that's just, uh, it's across the line. The morals of our country have Listen, just gone if you got a toilet. problem with that, you knew full well who was going to be at halftime. Mm-hmm. If you knew anything about Shakira, you know that her shtick is the fucking gypsy hips. Oh, yeah. You knew... I, I don't even listen to her stuff anymore, but I know that girl has a thing with the hips, and it is magnificent. <laughs> it's not awful. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's no, not I'm, awful. I'm not going to complain. Yeah. You know. Uh, I'm so, not going to complain. But yet, the, you had these people that just, I'm like, no, I, I, I can't hear it. I'm sorry. Water for ducks back. Deaf ears yeah, right here. Yeah, you got nothing. That's me. not an argument. You uh, and When you start... Asking for the Chiefs and the Niners and every other NFL team and every NBA team to start pulling off cheerleaders or start putting them in Jedi robes, <laughs> then we'll have a comp- then I'll be like, well, yeah. okay, you you apparently have a have a problem, yeah. and we can work with that anyway. Yeah, I so, know. I'm with you. That I'm made me, it. made me laugh. Yeah, it just gets me frustrated with the things that people will complain about, but the things that people will let slide. The, yeah, the whole exactly. moral compass thing is like yeah. completely out of whack at the moment. Yeah. I just don't understand any of it. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all I have to so, say about that. That's all I have to say about that one. Mm. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it on. We got to move Bowl. on because yeah. I'll get fired up. Yeah, Super Bowl, which is unusual. Topic. I don't usually get fired up on the show. See, now you're ready to go. Too. Oh, I guess I'm like a horse <laughs> in the. I'm waiting for the bell and the the doors to open. I think they already did the like the cowbell. Go go. Oh, no, the cool. the ring of the bell when they open the doors and let the horses go at the race. Oh. You ever watch horse race? No. I've been following a thing, though, in L.A. They've been having oh. a problem with having to euthanize the horses because they aren't... They get uh, fucked up on the races. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, you, you know, uh, the way that I started reading the, the articles and uh, how interpreting them, it almost reminded me a lot of how we are over engineering tomatoes it's like some of the horses or bananas yeah are so um bred for a a singular purpose Mm -hmm. that they're almost breeding out of their ability to have uh endurance in their joints and and muscles and tendons they're they're built for like a like dogs yeah you know they're so bred in such a specific way that the and they've gone so far down a specific like a heritage tree Mm -hmm. that uh, they can only do racing, and any any sort of injury, it's you're done. Yeah, the, the, you have to put the horse down. It, it you know, there's no like we were over in the UK on the Isle of Man, and there was like oh a retirement farm for you know horses that were formerly carriages, yeah. you know, carriage pullers. It's like no no no, these horses race, and the type of injury it sustained, uh, you know, as its investor, like no, nope, you put it down. Yeah, game's over for the horse. I'm like. That well, starts that, to hurt me in the heart place. I mean, that reminds me, my um, older brother, Sean, hashtag hi, Sean, if you listen to this hashtag show. Hashtag hi, Sean. Uh, he, they adopted a greyhound. Um, this is some number of years ago now. But the greyhound was a rescue greyhound mm-hmm. that came out of Mexico from oh, greyhound wow. racing. It was oh. a retired racing dog. How old was it? Uh, not very old. I was they, gonna say, I'm <clears throat> sure, like horses, th- yeah. you know. At, well, and the thing if they was, start to get to adult, they've gone too far. They have like uh, documentation on his race history, and oh. they he didn't or she, I think, Darby, um, wasn't a very good racer, so <laughs> that was part of the reason why she got retired. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that was how they ended up with her through some. Does she bark in Mexican? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, like underlay, you know. It, I don't even <laughs> Los Bark. <laughs> Puckle. You know, I don't know. I don't know what they do. But <laughs> Los Bark. Los Barco. Los Barco. <laughs> Jeez. Which is you know mm. in, yeah, in France know. or Le Barc. Yeah. Eh? Oh, we were just talking we were just joking around about something similar to that. Oh. Uh my neighbor, so Chandler's friend that lives a couple doors down. They just adopted a dog that came from China, and we were talking to him. Oh, like, wow. Oh, that's a great dog, except uh, it only speaks Chinese. Is that a problem? It probably has a coronavirus. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Is it from the Wuhan prune? <laughs> Maybe. Oh. Apparently, it got hit by a car. Oh, no. And it's a tripod now. Really? Mm-hmm. In China? Or it got-, it got hit by a car in China, and somehow the dog is now 
What? I mean, Trump probably wants to get rid of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? What kind of tariffs are there on imported dogs? <laughs> I don't know. Well, for three legs, it's just a discount. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not a full dog, yeah, so no. it, it slides in on exceptions. Well, yeah, you can basically just put a camera mount on its back, and then it's a tripod. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's a gyroscope. <laughs> yeah, how do they even what get the dog? What kind of dog is it? <clears throat> um... A uh, lab? I don't know if I want to think about how a dog gets over here from China. I hope I, it's a via airplane and not a boat. No, they probably put it in a shipping container with some food. Like all the... No, I don't want to think about that. Speaking of that, so I, my my cube neighbor, Greg, hashtag hi, Greg. Hashtag go anal. Um, he, Exactly. <laughs> he was reading me this article yesterday that was talking about in Vietnam. I think it was Vietnam. Um, or Taiwan or something like that. But this company was making, <clears throat> here I go again. Well, you're not coughing yet, so we're, we're all good. This company was making coffee. Okay. And they were taking like batteries and like grinding up the black powder and mixing it with the coffee and all this other shit. What the fuck? And then selling that as coffee for years. And they sold like I feel like before we totally throw a country under the bus, we need to get that right. <laughs> they had sold like three, three. I want to say was it thirty or three hundred? Some number of tons of coffee for the year, and with battery. Wow. Yeah, and like like a uh, like black powder and stuff from like a. That reminds me too of. Um, mm. Have you ever been to New Orleans? Not since breakfast. I well, yeah, that would have been a quick trip. Uh, do you have uh, no, a coronavirus? Not, uh, the p- the there. place, the famous place that's known for oh man, this is gonna hurt me. Where all the they throw uh, all the, beads? the beignets? The place is famous for the beignets. Okay. Um, I went to New Orleans uh, f- when I was working early on for the bank uh, for a Unix convention, uh-huh. and it sounds like a nerdful good time. It was. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, and it was uh, the uh, my boss took me to this. I can't remember the name of the place. It's French, <laughs> as most things in New well, Orleans are. In the French Quarter. Uh, and they're famous for the for their beignets, but they're also famous for their coffee. Okay. And um, while at the time I really wasn't a coffee person, I was you know lattes and macchiatos and mochas and whatnot. Okay. Um, my boss had ordered me the same thing he gets, and it was just like a, a black coffee with some creamer on the side. Their coffee has a blend, if not it's entirely, with uh, chicory root, which is like a filler. Uh, it, it's not coffee bean. It's like a, okay. a root that has a coffee-like taste. That <laughs> So it's filler. It, it's filler. Yeah. Uh, you know, for lower ink at the time, you know, when it was, you couldn't afford coffee beans or you couldn't get coffee beans imported, uh-huh. uh, you just couldn't pay for it, uh, chicory root. Uh, and it, I didn't know either way, but it was one of the best cups of coffee. Because it had uh, other flavor, like a different kind of flavor? Uh, it, it just had like a more, a f- I God. I mean, I'm going to sound totally pretentious, but it had like a, a different body to the coffee. Okay. Um, I, I still wasn't drinking black coffee at that point and even afterwards, but I enjoyed the taste of something that was that I thought was coffee, and I, I kind of chased that for a good couple of years. Like, man, nothing... Like, hmm. what was that? Uh, and then I remembered at some point the name of the restaurant, and I think I had asked Venus, like, go get me some of the coffee beans from some this place. Uh, and it wasn't until then where we did, like, some groundhogging and found, or groundhogging, some digging, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where we found out that the bulk of their stuff is made or filled with uh, chicory root as, okay. like, a blend. Okay. Uh, and that gives it its unique taste. Can you get that at Dutch Brothers? No. How about Starbucks? No, but you can get it at Rayleigh's. Pete's. Oh, really? Yeah. You can get a New Orleans blend that has chicory root in it? I think you can get Is the that what can. It's called? A, a can of whoop ass? A can. Well, <laughs> it'll whoop your ass. You drink that stuff black. <laughs> and I don't even know the uh, caffeine content. No need to be racist here, pal. Whoa, take it easy, soldier. <laughs> I am not a GOP senator. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Horses out the gate. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway, all right. Good cup of coffee. If you're ever inch or if you make your way to New Orleans or you want to try different, um, I would like to go there. 
type of I've God, not ever been really there. good food. Yeah. Really good food. Uh, muffaletta. You ever had a muffaletta? <laughs> Take it easy <laughs> now. Wow. Here's a hint. The I'm pants really, are on. I'm not sure how to answer this question. <laughs> well, you Is this should, a trick question? It doesn't involve your wife, I promise, or mine. Uh, Maybe. It's a, it's a, whoa. I'm not. Wow. <laughs> That's, hey, buddy. How you doing? You looking for uh, some fun later? No, I, no. Uh, Okay. I'm, really I'm good listening. sandwich. Because um, it's made with like an olive, uh, a ham and uh-huh. like an olive tapenade. Like a, mm-hmm. it's like the, oh man, it's really good. And it's served huge. Yeah. It's like a, anyway, muffaletta and muffaletta. gumbo. Hmm. New Orleans. All right. It's like one, no, of I, the, I, one of those places that's worth the trip and like go in, go to, I think we've talked about like hole in the wall restaurants. Yeah. Or mom and pops. Those are the get best. Real gumbos. Like when I when I went, because uh, I think I've been a second time. I I can't remember when, uh, but if you go to New Orleans, uh, like when some places when we've talked about, like what what kind of drink do you get? It's like a you're trying to like gauge. You know, you get a hamburger, or we get Bloody Marys to like, yeah, gauge what their caliber is of the drink. Yeah. When when I go to New Orleans, or if you go to New Orleans. Try gumbo in every place that you get. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the twist, yeah, is is worth it to see. You know, uh, that's almost like the variance. Like, uh, here's your baseline. Yeah, get a gumbo, and then you see how each restaurant and each chef puts their flavor profile on it. Yeah. Uh, and you can't go wrong because it's a. I mean, as long as you like kind of spicy rice. Was it the Creole House? No. Hmm. Was it on Canal Street? Was it McDonald's? No. Mm. It's like a, it's, I want to say it's French. It's got like a French. Oh, a French name? Yeah. Do, do rock? Oh, man. Hmm. Do, uh, like. Uh, I'm just looking do at Do New map. Orleans beignet. I'm just looking at the map, to be honest with oh. you. Oh. Well, shit. <laughs> That's how I find shit all the time. I just use, I just use Google Maps. Just use a map? Zoom in on an area and go, hmm. Oh, Okay. There's all. Man, hey there's Siri, where can I get some muffaletta? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of restaurants down there. Oh yeah, I mean it's, <clears throat> uh, you know, and you, you could not go wrong and go to like an Emerald Lagasse kind of thing. Yeah, but and I'm sure it's not bad. I think Brett and my dad went there when they were traveling back from uh, Florida. I mean, there's a there's a McDonald's. Yeah, no. Why? No. Why, bro? I'm going to be sad, too, when all those sea levels rise and we lose New Orleans. Yeah. That's going to be sad. Um, hmm, okay. Anyway. Well. I'll find it and put a link in the description in our YouTube. Uh, yeah, you should do that. YouTube post. Because I'm sure people will want to know now. Yeah. I, I have not been to New Orleans. It was a really good cup of coffee. Do. You don't drink coffee? You ever drink uh, it black? I if mean, you do? oh, hell no. Hmm. I, I don't care much for black coffee. Hmm. Mm. It's just too bitter. Too bitter. I yeah, I don't like the uh, bitter. That's kind of you know like I don't really like a uh, bitter IPA beer either. If it's real hoppy, yeah, it gives it that bitter flavor. I don't care much for that. You're speaking Greek to me. I just know bitter is bad. IPA is uh like usually they all these crazy hop beers that are around like hop stupid and it's like. Double, triple, hop, hoppity, hop, hopper, hop to the barber shop kind of shit. Yeah. I don't know. Brewed with live rabbits. Yeah. Hey, let's take the, the bitterest hops. part of the beer and let's add a shit ton of it. There's so many. I just don't man. care for it. I was Who was I bitching about this to? Yeah, you know, I went in to get ciders mm-hmm. uh, before Super Bowl Sunday is like an excuse to like get a couple ciders. Yeah. And they're all pushed out with all the fucking seltzers. <laughs> like I'm so. I know. Like, come on, man. And I man. don't care much for the seltzers either. I mean, I like, I just like the- I enjoy the- The like, bubblies. Yeah. But I don't care much for like the hard seltzer drinks. No. Just, well, I think they're good for getting shit-faced fast with a limited <laughs> amount of like back bitter tasting. Well, I mean, if you're doing that, you might as well just get, you know, the balls, the, what do they call those? The, the, the balls? <laughs> Hashtag high, <laughs> run will. The buzz balls. Have you had those? I think I've had one a ways back, and that gets nothing for me. Oh, one or two of those. A buzz ball? A buzz ball. Like a particular flavor? 
No, I don't think so. They have a bunch. And they're, yeah. they're Do all... Do you prefer it? I don't, I don't care. I'll you just, get the mojito I'm just or try, something. trying them. You know what I mean? You just hit them? Yeah. Is it a thing you pound? But the thing is about the buzz balls is they're different alcohol and different flavors. Yeah. So one will have like a vodka base and one will be something else or whatever. It just depends on the flavor what yeah. they put with it. I took the Four loco can <laughs> inside because it was still over here. And because it's so cold, it's been refrigerated. Yeah. So did you drink it? Anyway, so I put it on the counter and Piper was looking at it. And Venus didn't know what it was because it was just kind of off to the side. So she couldn't see the Four loco. She's like, what is that? And Piper's looking at it. She's like, Four loco. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, great. Put that down. Fantastic. She's like, well, what flavor is it? I'm like, I don't know. It just says black on it. I know. It's just black. Did you try it yet? No. I, oh. No. But then we were looking at, we we're trying to find the, through the ingredients, like, what flavor is black? <laughs> and is Venus it? and I had an inside joke about what black probably was. And my oh. daughter, thank goodness, I please skip over this part, sweetheart, if you're listening. <laughs> Venus and I had an inside joke about what it was, and now you will probably get it if you listen, but I hope you don't. And if you don't, we're moving on. But we didn't couldn't find it. But then we were pulling apart the, like the amount of servings per can, and it's four point seven five servings. Oh fuck! Per really? Can in one can? In one can. I'm like fuck. At that, at that show, we had two, two or three. I figure I will look this up. What the four, black. What flavor is the black floor? F- floor four loco. Black four loco. Um, okay, so this is on the four loco. Please don't site. say peach. For fuck's sake, please don't say. I peach. have to tell it what my. What my Are you over eighteen? Yeah. Are I'm you? I'm fucking old, man. I hope so. I got a left nut that's older than most voters. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the other one's just as old. No, the other one, it's like some Just sort the of, one? It's a hybrid. It was installed Cyborg. later? yeah. Okay, so here's what it says on the 4Loco website. I can't believe I'm on here. Um, It's been like a year plus. We're due back. This is what it says. At 14% alcohol. Yes. And um, it's a 23.5 ounce can. And it's, uh, the description says, Four loco nights are always unexpected and adventurous. Good God. Your night could end in glory or it could end in you finishing an entire pizza by yourself in bed. Ooh. With, never mind, I'm not going to. Whoa. Which is kind of glorious in its own way. Black is just as bold as your four loco night out. We won't tell you what it tastes like. Oh, my God. (laughs) That's what it says. We won't tell you what it tastes like. You just have to find out. At the start of your next Four loco story. So. Fuck. This is going to turn into you. Yeah. Running around naked. Yeah. With a pizza around my junk. <laughs> with a pizza. Yeah. Spin the wheel. <laughs> uh-huh. And a jar of lube. You got so pepperoni. You go. Get this flavor, it says. That's all. That's all you get. You don't get any description. They don't even want you to know what it is, what the flavor is. God damn it. So you have Chandler to think for that. Well, now it's all up to science. Well, yeah. You got to just. Try crap. I mean, I remember Tony would, he was allergic to avocado and he loves it. He loves guacamole and stuff. Wow. And so he would just like not eat it for months. And then one day, uh, I'm going to try some avocado. And then his throat would swell up. I'll be damned. Yeah. That's weird. Uh huh. Every time. But he would do it for science. Am I still. And then he would. Yeah, really? really. He would ch- he would check himself to see if he could you know do it or not. Did you just keep like and an EpiPen on him or something, or was it not no. so bad that it closed? I it was before EpiPens, I think. Oh, but his throat would like start closing on him, and he'd be all, "Ooh, it, this is the same guy." Wow. One I remember one time he brought in a big bag of uh, dried apricots, mm-hmm. right? A big bag of them, and one day he's like, "Oh, I'm just gonna eat one." The next day, he's all, I'll eat two. And then he would come back. He would go home and then come back, and then nothing happened because he's expecting bathroom things. Oh, okay. So then the next day, I'll eat four. Okay. And the next day, I'm going to eat eight of them. And then he would go home and report on what happened. Oh, there was a little something there. And then he's finally like, I'm going to eat 16. I'll just finish off the bag. Oh, boy. And then the next day, he'd be like, oh, yeah, that really got me. He he loved that crap. I'll be figuratively and literally. <laughs> <laughs> he loved the 
the for science experimentation yeah. with his own body. I'll be so, damned. Yeah. Yeah. So. Live life dangerously. <laughs> if anyone knows what four loco black tastes like before we get into before foo gets into that can. Yeah. Please let I'll us I'll hold know. off for an episode. Sad Dad's Club Podcast. Maybe at, I'll drink it before seventy three. At gmail dot com. Sad Dad's Club Podcast at gmail dot com. Right. Yeah. So anyway. <clears throat> anyway. So I have a tragic story turned good, I think. Let's go. Let's do it. It's a frustration and a thing that I worry about because of my commute. Okay. And buying a car that doesn't have a spare tire. Yes. Mm. That is the new It's a new yeah, it's like yeah. it's a common more common now. Yeah. To have a, you Does your car have a spare? No, it has the like a compressor, like a yeah. cigarette compressor and some run flat juice. Okay. And, I'm going to have to get me some juice. And that's it. Yeah. So I <clears throat> it was last Friday. Mm -hmm. Go to lunch with some friends uh, at work. And on the way back, the car, I look down, and there's my air pressure monitor, and (laughs) it's on. And it's telling me I got 15 pounds in the back tire, which is supposed to be at 40. Okay. Oh, damn. So I get back to the office because it's not that far. And I had just bought this little compressor that plugs into the Mm 12-volt in the car. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'll bust this out and fill it up. And then I fill it up, and I'm starting to... I'm listening, don't hear any leaks or anything. Mm -hmm. Don't find a nail, so I don't know where it was. Uh, I think it was on the back side of the tire or something. Okay. Um, And then I'm going to go back to work, and I'm thinking to myself, my commute's like 46 miles or 43 miles or something like that. And I'm like, well, this is kind of lame because if I come out after work and it's flat, then I can't do anything about it other than fill it up and then stress about it. Right. So I'm going to take it and have it looked at. So I go to Les Schwab up in Grass Valley. Okay. Probably mistake number one. Or maybe not. I don't know. I haven't decided. Okay. Go to Les Schwab. I tell them what's going on. They pull the tire off. And I'm one of these people where when my car is getting worked on at a shop, I'm outside watching them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy comes out, and he's like, "Oh, it's not good. I can't repair it. Come in, I'll I'll show it to you." So, okay. I go look at it, and what happened is the nail that went into the tire c- probably could have been repaired where it was. Okay. It wasn't in the sidewall, so the puncture itself would have been okay, would have been repairable. But as the tire deflated and it got driven on, um, the nail ended up gouging out the back of the bead. Okay. Uh, all the rubber behind the bead and it okay. just jacked it up. Okay. Um, I probably got lucky it didn't actually puncture it there too. Okay. So they can't repair it. Well, here's the deal. They don't carry that tire. They're not going to order that tire. Um, they don't have another tire, but they will sell me some other tire. And I'm like, I'm not putting a mismatched set of tires on this car. Okay. And I'm not going to buy a tire from you to turn around and go home and buy another tire to put on this car. That's not going to happen. Right. And also, do you have a spare to sell me? Maybe I can just buy a spare off you. Okay. No, I don't have one of those. So, and then he's like, but also, um, I can't put that tire back on the car. So now I'm 43 and change miles from home on a Friday. Mm Mm-hmm. No tire, no way to get home. Not going to buy a tire from them. Right. Right. Now what am I going to do? So my talking to my my wife and my son, my son's like, well, if I can get a tire, can I bring it up and have you mount it? He goes, yeah. Nobody has it. This is no. a this tire size is like, what was it? It's a two twenty five forty eighteen. God, I find that hard to believe. Okay, keep going. Uh, so <clears throat> nobody has it. It has to be ordered. Okay. So I'm like kind of going back and forth to the guy. I'm on the phone with my wife trying to figure out what to do. And the guy's like, okay, I can mount the tire and I can put it back on the car, but I can't fill it with air. And I'm like, well, that's cool because I have a compressor in my car that I literally just bought like a week yeah, before. So you're, yeah. I'm good to go. I don't need your air, bitch. Can you just put enough? Or no, I can fill it. And, and he goes, well, you can't fill it on the property. Okay. <sighs> Well, can you put enough air in it so I can drive off the property without damaging something? No. So this is where we're we're going, right? Right. And I'm starting to get super frustrated and then like stressed out because how the fuck am I going to get home? Right. And uh, I think he finally saw 
like this guy is fucked. Right. Right. Well, you, right. Uh, you know what I you mean? You were. Yeah, I was fucked if at that was, point. If he was, if he was. You know, I mean, black and white reading his probably binders as far as an employee. His training. You were, you were fucked. Yeah. So he sees the dilemma and the fuckery. Yeah. And um, he goes, well, I'll go put the tire back on the car. And I'm thinking, OK, so I'm going to have to like roll it off flat and put some air in it on the street. Right. Right. And a uh, couple minutes, few minutes go by. And he pulls the car up right out in front of Les Schwab, and there's air in the tire, and I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, you have no idea how awesome that is. Thank you so much. Right. And I'm like, how much do I owe you? Nothing, because we didn't repair anything. Right. I'm um, okay. So I had to go in and sign something. And so then at that point, I'm like, I got air in my tire. I can get the fuck out of here. I can at least right. keep an eye on it. I have it. a net new set of choices. Yes. Okay. So I'm like, okay, head back to the office, get my shit out of my cube, and head home. Okay. In the meantime, I'm calling my wife, and we're talking about, you know, what's the next step? What do I do? And so she finds the same tire um, at Walmart. Okay. uh, Dot com. And it's being sold for 100 and... This is normally around the... Oh, you got it. um, Oh, no. Got away. This tire... This tire sells for about one hundred and eighty to two hundred dollars. Okay. Actually, Tire Rack has it for two hundred five. What? Yeah. Ooh, premium. So bitch. it's it's an expensive tire. Okay. So she finds it at Walmart for a hundred and forty eight bucks. Okay. And I'm like, that's cool. And then she also finds it at Amazon for a hundred and twenty and change. Nice. That is a good deal. Well, neither one of those. They still have to order them. Right. So I'm like, okay. I'm going to go now, and also knowing, too, that I prefer to buy tires from America's Tire Company. They've always been very good to me. Mm -hmm. So I know that they do price matching. Okay. So I go, okay, on my way home, I come into town. I'm watching that fucking tire like a hawk to see what the thing is. And it it deflates a couple pounds, but it's no big deal. Okay. I pull into America's Tire. I kind of fill the guy on what's going on. Okay. And I say to him, uh, do you guys price match? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I have this tire at Walmart. It's one forty-eight. Oh, okay. And he's, I don't know we got to look it up because I don't have a link to it. And I go, well, do you guys? And I'm thinking, there's no way in hell they're going to price match Amazon. Like Best Buy doesn't price match Amazon. Yeah, okay. Unless it's an Amazon sold product. Okay. And I go, do you guys price match Amazon? He goes, oh yeah. And I'm like, what? No way. Okay, so my wife had taken. My Amazon account added it to the cart. So when I open up my phone, it's, there it is in my cart. Yeah. I tap right to it and I show it to him and he goes, he looks at the the thing and goes, oh, okay, no problem. So I'll I'm, be damned. 120 dude. bucks, dude. Dude. Yeah, that's amazing. And then on t- I said, you know, I was really bummed when I put these tires on the car. I didn't buy them at America's Tire. I bought them at the Cadillac dealer and they don't even offer an extended warranty of any kind like a okay. replacement warranty. Oh, yeah, yeah. He goes, "Oh, well, I can sell you a certificate for all the tires." No way. So I bought certificates, replacement certificates for all the tires from America's Tire Company for tires they they I didn't, didn't buy from them except the one. Right. <sighs> Like it, it how much was be that? Any better? Just, uh, it was twenty four bucks a tire. A tire. Yeah. Okay. So an extra hundred bucks. I was like, yeah, that's worth it. Done. So I go, okay. So he has to order the tire. He doesn't have it. Uh, sadly, this was Friday afternoon, and so it won't be there till Monday. So I'm like, fuck. I got to take a PTO day on Monday because I don't have any way to get to work. My wife has to go to work too. Right, right, right. So I'll just be stuck home with a car, and then. Um, so I make an appointment for two. He says, if we make the appointment for two, the tire should be here. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I set an alarm for myself because I'm playing video games nice. Monday. And uh, I set an alarm for myself for like 140. I go out and I look at the Cadillac app through OnStar will update and tell you what the tire pressure is on all your tires. Okay. When I open it, it tells me it's still at 39 pounds. And I'm like, hmm. And then I pull it down to refresh and it takes a minute. And it pops up and says, 14 pounds. Oh, yeah, you're dead. Oh, damn. Fuck. Get my compressor out. I fill the tire up. And then I head off over to the thing. 
30 minutes they had the fucking tire put on the car certificates bought and i was out of done there. 30 minutes i mean i it couldn't have been a better turnaround you know huh so i'd always wonder where do you think they make the money on saying that they'll match they have a big i don't know they have a big sign is it out just front. that their service is so much better that they're banking on you wanting to go there i guess as a recurring customer because they'll they have a big sign out front that says we will not be undersold okay they, they, and they're not fucking around when they say that so now i'm curious so did shan know the price of the tire before they matched it um yeah i, can th- I think she looked it up on their website was it over it was like 179 or so something. So can you imagine the amount of people though that, that don't are do that? That are yeah. Yeah. That are like shell I mean cuz that to me that says right off the top there's a That's six, huge. They're making a $60 profit. I guess tire markup is pretty high. Apparently so. Yeah. They're willing to eat 40 something bucks for someone that at least did the homework. Oh, that was 50 58 bucks. Per tire, if I had bought four tires, that's two hundred dollars off. So over two hundred dollars. The, the off. lesson here: <laughs> go it, to America's Tire. Do or your research. Tire. Yeah. yeah. Do your research. Yep. Get yourself a, a price match on the tire that you're looking for, and then America America's Tire. Yes. And then go to America's Tire with it ready to be pulled up on some sort of electronic device to prove that you can yeah you can match and they'll do it. They'll do it. And, uh, you know, I was impressed that the store there in Rockland on Stanford Ranch, <clears throat> I know people that are This purchase the lesson has been brought to you by SideDadsClubPodcast.net. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the dude who helped me on Friday, mm-hmm. uh, super nice, couldn't have been happier with his temperament and all that. I mean, just really nice guy. Mm-hmm. Um, when I went back on Monday, uh, he didn't help me. Another guy helped me. Super fucking nice guy. Yeah. So then I'm sitting... In there, and I like to watch the guys work. I like to see what they're doing with the tires. I don't know. It's just fascinating to me. Yeah. Uh, and I, as I'm looking in there, I realize the guy that sold me the tire on Friday is in there now working. Mm-hmm. And he stops and he sees me and he gives me a, hey, man. Like. The, yeah. Had the wherewithal to remember customer yeah. recognition. Yeah. I'll and then down. he was the one that pulled the car up for me. And I was, hey, man, you're, you guys are awesome. Yeah. I couldn't be happier right now. So, yeah. Awesome. Research your tire, find it for a low price, and go to America's Tire, and they will match the price. Yeah. And you will save some money. It's awesome. Do do a little bit of legwork. Yeah. And get yourself some saved money, some, some pennies in your pocket. Absolutely. You know, and get yourself some good service yep. from apparently at least an organization that wants to to serve you. Yeah positively yeah and the place is clean and they're just super nice and if you don't you're probably getting boned (laughs) by a place that wants to serve you not in a good way and you know yeah 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 so that's my that's my sad story shitty story turned good so how far off are you now in staggered tire wear from oh i bought those tires in like september so so you're not that no you're not no not bad at all. Tripoding. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, they're basically brand new tires. Yeah, tripoding. No, because the one would press you. Yeah. Just be all leany. No, yeah, it's good. So, yeah, anyway. I have a car story, too. Oh, you do? But it involves my running. Oh, speaking of running. Did you get hit by a car? No. Oh. No, but I am I thinking think I about, about after that. that accident that happened down there. The one that I'm happened thinking off about Creek? maybe doing like one ear. Yeah. Did she pass away or he? I don't, I don't even know. remember. I thought it was a she. <clears throat> well, you know, it's funny that you're talking about that because one night we had been, we went, uh, oh, I think it was Friday night, actually. My wife and I had gone out to dinner to Citrus Heights and we were coming back. Mm-hmm. And I'll come back and go down Kirby and then up Riverside to the house. Yeah. As we're coming from Kirby and turning right onto Riverside, there's a bunch of PD ambulance fire mm-hmm. truck stuff mm-hmm. going mm-hmm. on right in front of that uh, gas station like right in between yeah somebody had hit somebody right there 
and I'll, I'll be damned. they were working on them right in the median. Ugh. And that was the thing too. So a couple people got hit by cars here in town just recently. Yeah, and I don't, I can't remember now. I'm trying to remember the story, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to butcher it. But essentially, what it the fear it put into me was, you know, uh, I'm pretty aware, yeah. always keeping like my periphery as I run, and when I run with my headphones and I'm listening to music, you know, I, as a an alert driver, it's just like one of those things that's like always baked in. It's like, you know, when I cross the street, I'm always looking. I'm never so lost in the music or whatever I'm listening to oh, yeah. that I'm zoned out. Yeah. But. Well, if you do your due diligence. Right. That doesn't always account for the other 50% mm-hmm. that could be coming in sideways. But if I could one ear or have, you know, rotate to an earbud op option that would afford me music but keep me one ear to the world to help make sure that I'm safer because people are idiots outside of yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, so I've been given that a lot of thought recently because I'm like, you know, I, you know, who wants to be caught unawares while you're listening to whatever you've got going on? You know, well, like, I don't oh, know yeah, exactly. I, I don't know exactly where I that she was running. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where that accident happened, and I thought it was <clears throat> it was the out there off of Wood Creek. Yeah, the Safeway that's right there. She was hit in the crosswalk at Bl- Wood Creek and Blue Oaks. Was it in front of Safeway or on the other side, like towards like where Don's house is? Uh, I thought it was the Safeway. No, oh, that's that's what it was. Um, Behind Christmas Walt- Tree Xylophone, the portals. Uh-huh. The ingress portals that oh, are the that? next way up uh-huh. that's got that, it's almost double wide, but yes. it's painted for single lanes. Yes. And there's an apartment complex, but there's a median splitter. I know exactly what she you're talking about. She got hit in that crosswalk between the mm. park mm-hmm. and the median split. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm like... It's not a stop sign. It's not a stop sign. Yeah. But also, it is so wide yeah. that... Uh, you know, I, I haven't run up there, but we've ingressed up there plenty of times, mm-hmm. and it is so wide. I find it hard to believe that if you're a pedestrian, that you're you would not be aware of where the cars are. Mm-hmm. So I am only left to believe that someone was going someone so was fast someone or... either she wasn't, and it's a straightaway too for mm-hmm. the most part, like, unless you're coming southbound. And there's that small turn. But even then, it's so wide that you would, unless you were headphoned and you were crossing thinking you had time yeah. and you were oblivious to traffic, you, there's no way you get caught. You're going to see something coming. Man, I'm so skeptical about crossing streets like that. I'm yeah. like, I would be ha- hounding. If I'm, yeah. if I'm crossing in front of traffic that i know is coming from the right i'm staring that direction as yeah. i'm go getting ready yeah, yeah. to go before and there, i go there are a number of uh, you know i'll try and adjust my route <laughs> to avoid something to like that. avoid as many off op- as many times as i can cut off needing to cross an intersection you know i try to do that just yeah. to avoid one it's like a pace thing for me it's like i don't want to be st- standing there jogging in place uh, but two. But you look so good you, when you're doing. I know. That. You see my yoga pants. Oh, I have. Hi. Uh, two. The the variabilities of cars and high speed objects is no bueno, right? Well, you, let's you know, talk who, about that because Blue Oaks is like practically a freeway. Oh yeah. At this point, yeah. Trying That's to get giant, between the freeway to the. I think on the that one side it's four lanes and on the other side it's three lanes. I mean it's a big road and when yeah. you have a big road people tend to speed. Go too That's fast. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I've been thinking about that, but that was a segue into making uh, us keeping tabs on your walking. Uh huh. And I'm still run, although I need to post my runs. But if you've been following, mm-hmm. you've been. I have o- on as well. I, I realize one. that I'm. This is a thing that I do when I'm at work. So uh, I have a long standing. I talked. We talked about one, how I, on Friday I went to lunch. Yeah, that's a thing that happens every Friday. It, you know, there are so exceptions. I do it. I do it Monday through Thursday at, at lunchtime, and then I have a mentally 
I have to figure it out, but I have a hard time figuring out when or where I'm going to do it when I'm at home. Like figuring out yeah. my time frame for, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And if it's a weekend, I'm not going to get up early to go do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's yeah. just like mentally I have to figure that out. Yeah. And I, it, I Yeah. And yeah. at this point too, see, uh, my struggle now is uh, now that my distance is so long, mm-hmm. I don't That's what want to get yeah, my distance. My throw, though. <laughs> the throw. Sometimes it's... Anyway. It involves the hips, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Some Shakira shit going on here. <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome to the house. Uh, I'm offended. Because my <laughs> distance is... Well, <laughs> your wife's not. Oh. hey Zing! Because my distance is so long, I don't feel like I need to get up early. Uh-huh. Uh, so that forces me into... Doing it at my lunch break, uh-huh. uh, and plus it's t- cold as shit. Yeah, but I mean it's in the fifties. As far as timing goes, <laughs> yeah. What? It's what? <laughs> it is f- fucking thirty lows. No, I know it's we're yeah. in the, at least in the, the low forties. Uh, at least, as far as timing and sad dadding, I really should be running in the morning because you know I I eat a good meal at lunch. Or I take a break from work just to clear head and whatnot. Uh, and now I'm starting to double stack that with running at lunch because I don't want to get up in the morning. But I did that for six plus months. So there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to do it. But now I'm justifying it by saying, well, I'm not running so long, so I don't need to put that time there. I feel like you could stack lunch while you're working. You could, you could probably eat a sandwich while you're... I do that often. Oh, okay. But... And then uh, you have an hour for runnings. Yeah. But then like the ethics me as far as working starts to kick in. And it's uh-huh. like, listen, you're being paid to work, not to double dip. And so then yeah. I get, I feel, I start to feel awkward. Like I'm not giving the company the time that, that they're paying for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm not going to say that it hasn't happened <laughs> hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to pin you down. Yeah, I anything. took that training. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't confirming or denying shit. <laughs> <clears throat> but hypothetically, yeah, no, uh, it's all hypothetical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all of what, it. What now? Yeah. yeah, allegedly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, you know, same thing. It would probably be better for my schedule if I ran in the morning. But uh, I found I really enjoy my sleep now. And now that I'm not training for a marathon, but a half marathon, it's like eh, I can run. I could fit that at lunch. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I feel you. The mental struggles are. Are there and mm-hmm. it, you know who was I? Uh, we were. T- I was talking to Venus's mom earlier about some of the things that she's getting past with her. She had her fusion done. Yeah, and she's seeing really her pot- fusion. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, so, now you're seeing what I'm seeing. Oh yeah. Take it easy. <laughs> Took soldier. you a minute. <laughs> hey now. You were like, wait, wait, what? Well, yeah, Ford fusions. <laughs> My dad has one of those. Uh, the positive gains that she's seen from her her. Uh, Spinal fusion, similar to like Mike and Toast have had, yeah, uh, really great gains, you know. But the, you know, getting some of, the, you know, I was explaining to you, small mental successes, you know, uh, everything's a struggle, and that's okay. And sometimes you just need to scale it down and take the positives mm-hmm. to keep a positive headspace. Yeah. So I'm there. I'm there with you. It's like yeah. some days. Sometimes you weeks you're just taking the win of the Monday through Thursday, and I'm gonna make up this run or I'm gonna make up this walk somewhere, and I'm gonna do my best, uh, but put some put some shoulder into it because yeah, at the end when you get those successes and those victories, I guarantee you you're gonna feel you're gonna have a better headspace, better yeah. positivity about. Fucking, I did it. Well, and, it was, and once you do it, then it's like, well, now I can't because I've seen the scene. Yeah, you know, kind of thing. Well, what happened is, uh, you know, I said I took Monday off, so I didn't walk that day. Right. And then, so yesterday, I got to work and I did my walk, and it was like, uh, my pace was like almost a minute better. Yeah. Uh, than it was the week before. Nice. And then today, my pace was okay, but. Um, the, the trail that I take takes you around the backside of the building and I usually keep going and go the the long way back mm-hmm. to the mm-hmm. front, but it was, I had a 
two things happened. I really had to fucking go to the bathroom. Hey, so man. I was like, you all right, go. I'm going to take gotta the go. trail. I'm going to take the trail back up to the office for the bathroom. We got a Sun City story for that. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. I know your feels. Yeah, yeah. And then the other part of it was my calves have just been getting super tight on me um, yeah. from the hills and stuff. So so I had it kind of double. You know, I still had decent pace today, but mm-hmm. I had to cut it a little bit short for the bathroom run. But You know, and th- <clears throat> to that, yeah. right, I think last week when we talked, I said I had a, I had a bad day. Yeah. You know, that the... I don't remember if it was that day, the podcast recording day or the day before, but you know, I, I was off and didn't feel, and I was having struggles hitting my paces that I thought I could hit and have hit, you know, in prior Prior, weeks. Um, it's all the cheesecake. It, it, it ebbs and flows. Uh, and then Saturday I had, uh, it was, so this was this Saturday, yeah, so it was following the podcast. This Saturday, I had what was, as far as training, I had like a 5K race pace. Uh, and I crushed my fastest time by 30-some seconds. Mm. So, you know, to as long as you're there and not seeing as like a, a pace is a failure, but that it's like, hey, you know, there's ebbs and flows. There's yeah. dips and peaks, and it's okay. And well, it was weird because yesterday... It- I didn't really feel like I was trying to push myself, but yet at the same time, all of a sudden I'm like, my pace is way yeah. higher. And I was like, oh damn, what's happening? Shit's getting real now. I guess so. But then today it was sort of like, my pace wasn't awful and I was maybe a little bit off of yesterday, but it was like, I'm going to head the back way yeah, so I can use the bathroom. But you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'll get back out there tomorrow. There you go. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. That's how you do it. I I can't remember how I described it last week, but then it, it hit me when we were coming to the podcast. I am, for what it's worth, I am proud. You, you mm. it's an, it inspires me because right, this is a net new for you. Give me a couple of weeks. Hey, you know, <laughs> don't be su- super proud until I've, I've, like I've been I said, at it I'll a couple keep weeks. you honest, but yeah. it's it's good to see. Yeah, you know, to not coast yeah. right. You could see, like, oh, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to stick it out and see where I can go. Well, you know, it's one of those things. I used to do it a lot. I mean, I used to run, you know, like years ago, and yeah. then it just, I just got lazy, and it's like, <clears throat> you know, it's like uh, I just realized I need to change something. So yeah, and, you know, if we we I talk about this in the house all the time. Yeah. It, it's you know, everyone, your genetics are are predetermined you know until we have gene modification therapy your your genetics are putting you into a body type that's already predestined uh you can try and overcome that with diet and exercise and you can do your best as far as time will afford you or your um your own inspiration to yourself but in the end you will always be struggling against your own genetics you're either going to accept your body type and what you can do about it and be comfortable with it or not, well i think it's you know mm, for me it's a mostly mental game yeah you know? and that's the hard i think that's the hardest part mm-hmm. is accepting you know yeah whether you you can accept where you are and that, you know all of those things i think sort of become net new catalysts as you get older and mm-hmm. become a sad dad or a sad mom or whatever you choose to be yeah as your uh, genetics change over time and you get older, your, you know, how your body changes, whether or not you accept, you know, your new forms, yeah. you know, and how you adjust to that in your head as well as, out, you know, externally. Yeah. Those are I mean, the struggles. It's, it's super easy to sit there and just say, fuck it. And. Yeah. It is. That's been happening way too long and I know and I get that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, it's like I just have to have the mental fortitude to push myself to do yeah. the things that I don't really want to do. Yeah. Well, and when you get there a couple of weeks and you're like, I'm done, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm the asshole on your shoulder and be like, Hey, are you sure? No, I won't. I won't do that. You're not done yet. No, you're not done. Yet. All right. This is a, I'm, this is a change for the, I'm the mental plan for me is change for the long term. So, Good. Yeah. We, a Venus read me a, a study, I don't know, I think it was last week about like marathon runners and uh, staving off heart disease or something. I'm like, well, 
you know, to me, that's, you know, that's a little bit far. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm not sta- trying to stave off heart disease. Yeah. Uh, you know, at this point in time, I, you know, I'm setting goals that are helping me keep inspired to, you know, I'm okay with my body type, but uh, the fitness is kind of where I'm like, eh, yeah. it's an excuse. These goals and these times uh, and setting some of these races are keeping me inspired to stay fit in a job where I don't really get much movement. Uh, and my yeah. time is so limited that my kids keep me busy and my duties keep me busy. So this keeps me, gives me a reason to do better and stay fit. Yeah. And hopefully that will evolve well, over, over Also, time your to, kids are at the age too where you're <clears throat> teaching them some. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. You're, <clears throat> you're putting in a good example for them. Yeah. For sure. It's not physics, though. E. Yeah. Do you have any physics homework tonight? We had a little bit. We had a survey. You almost acted like you were excited. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I don't mind it. I enjoy it. Actually, I enjoy it. I you enjoy, enjoy it. the challenge? I enjoy the challenge. And I wasn't terrible at physics. I'm more of a life science guy. Oh. <laughs> uh, bio, biology and whatnot. Uh, but physics, I'm, I'm okay at. It's the relearning the learning curve part that's, you know, been the time sink Mm -hmm. but she came home with a survey from her uh teacher uh which apparently was given to the entire class as like a poll test on how the class was going so something tells me between the counselors and the other criticisms Mm -hmm. that they have reached some sort of threshold where now a survey is what are we doing wrong yeah so what's happening so we went through that before the show, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and uh, the, the last question was like one of those just generalized, like, do you have anything else to say or constructive on something not mentioned in the test? Here comes the blastogram. Uh, and I wrote down, I wrote down my observations uh-huh. on a list outside, like blind to blind to her. Uh, and then I, we asked her, like, what what things do you see that you know are problematic or need feedback on? Uh, and she gave hers, and I kind of wrote them down. And then I said, here are things that myself and your mother have talked about or we have witnessed from what you've conveyed yeah. or w- things that we have seen. And I had them kind of written in shorthand, and then we we discussed those. Uh, and I said, so I'm going to leave this here, and if you can't put what I've written in shorthand into your own words on the paper, then either you don't feel the same or it's not something that's Important. A, an observation mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. And so I don't want you to put it. I mm-hmm. said, these are things that, so if you can't translate this shorthand into your own words, then you don't see it. Mm-hmm. And that it's, it wouldn't be fair for you to put it. Yeah. They're not asking your parents for the survey yet, <laughs> uh, but they're asking for you. So right. uh, we, we covered that. I feel really good about it. She And, you know, she's passing, uh, but... It's requiring supplemental instruction from me. Yeah, that's that's not ideal. No, I don't think it is. I mean, I, I, I get that if you're college bound. If you're in college, right? If you're at a university or maybe even JC or something. Yeah. But not in high school. Yeah. I, there should be a, a minimally, there should be a, a minimal amount of hand holding to a certain degree. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's interesting too to see. Um, crap, we're we're at time. Mm. Uh, some something I don't I don't have necessarily a, a critique on uh, enough to say anything about the methodology specifically, like the way that they're teaching. Mm-hmm. But something that I've noticed that's so drastically different from when I was in school was that the. Um, the, having a book, yeah, uh, like actual material to work alongside whatever the homework is. Um, so her, she gets a Chromebook, and whatever they're learning is like a like a digital page, uh, you know, like a tab in a in a, a Chrome tab mm-hmm. browser window. But yet their homework also is another tab in the window. Mm-hmm. So when you're stacking your 
reading material, yeah. it's like it's almost one dimensional. You're only getting one track of feed. Right. Whereas like when we were in school, it was like I can flip you had through your a book page here and the book here. Right. Yeah. So you could have cross here, reference. Yeah. You could flip through and always be referencing. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, I'm almost wondering if I need to get her like a like a head monitor to set up so that she could like dual dual screen or so what she if can you split print the thing out and then fill it out and then maybe and also then, also an option and then yeah and then do the homework and then fill the page out on the on yeah the that, I mean, on that the might Chromebook. be too yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a weird like something and i noticed i'm like it was one of the first things that when i realized we were probably going to be deep diving into physics i mm-hmm. i bought a book i bought a physics book because mm-hmm. i'm like you know, eventually I'm going to be looking at your your homework, your work problems, and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be flipping through looking for lessons plans and like, uh, okay. Uh, it just seems like a natural, like, method to working on stuff. Yeah. But then to be like, and I'll often catch her, like, okay, so, you know, where is the lesson where they're covering this? And she'll, like, tab over, and then we'll have to, okay, so... You read this. Back. Okay, so what was the word problem? Uh, Tab. Uh-huh. Tab. It's Tab. inefficient. It's it, grossly inefficient. I'm like, I could see how some students, yeah. it, especially if it's not there, if you have any sort of yeah. learning disability, <clears throat> if you're, if you it's can't stack, super distracted. If, yeah, <clears throat> if you can't stack, you're gonna get your attention is just gonna be like, now I'm here, now I'm here. What was I doing? Oh, I got to And then what was? Uh, it, right. I could see how it would be extremely frustrating. Right. I don't think that she has any sort of learning disability, but I can see how it's jarring to the input yeah. process. Yeah. There's not a smooth transition between what no. you are trying no. to fill out and what you're looking up. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Anyway, we right. are definitely at time. We're at time. So that means uh, we got to hit the bricks. Yeah, yeah. we got to do dad things. Well, minimally, I got to go home and put the show together. Bless you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, okay. Well, thanks for listening, and uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We'll uh, catch you next week. And uh, have a great week, everyone.